Thanks for staying with us. From South Sudan announcing its first coronavirus case to the death of Libya's former prime minister, we bring you uh, stories and happenings that made headlines over the weekend. Take a look. On Saturday, South Sudan became the 51st African country to confirm a case of COVID-19. Officials say Official 79-year-old woman working for the United Nations who recently arrived in the country from the Netherlands. To prevent the spread of the virus in South Sudan, President Salva Kiir last week imposed a curfew from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. for six weeks and closed borders, airports, schools, churches and mosques. Mahmoud Jibril, who abandoned Muammar Gaddafi to become Libya's rebel prime minister during the 2011 revolution, died on Sunday after contracting the coronavirus. Jibril was interim leader until the country held its first free elections in four decades in 2012, following the toppling of Gaddafi the year before. He died in a private hospital in Cairo, where he had been treated since contracting the virus late last month. Also on Sunday, Ethiopia's Ministry of Health confirmed the country's first deaths as a result of COVID-19. The two deaths, a 60-year-old woman and a 56-year-old man, were announced one hour apart. More than 100 Ivarians went on a rampage in the neighborhood of Yapungon, Abidjan, the commercial capital of Côte d'Ivoire, on Sunday night to protest against the building of a makeshift facility to house COVID-19 patients. Banging pots and pans, the angry residents tore down the unfinished structure, throwing prefabricated walls and metal poles on the ground. One protester was heard shouting, we don't want it, whilst others sang the national anthem. They also set fire to market stores on the road, leading to the structure. As of Sunday, Côte d'Ivoire has 245 patients with coronavirus infections. Meanwhile, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization says coronavirus-linked flight restrictions are hampering efforts to wipe out locust swarms on the verge of devastating crops in East Africa. The organization says the curbs have delayed deliveries of another current rate of spraying. Stocks in Kenya will run out within four days. Locust numbers exploded late last year, encouraged by unusual weather patterns amplified by climate change, and swarms dispersed eastwards from Yemen, with Kenya, Somalia and Ethiopia the hardest hit countries. A recent study conducted in Kenya has found that a majority of people in the country want a total lockdown enforced to stop the spread of coronavirus. The study, as reported by local media, suggests that 68% of Kenya's uh, polled said a total lockdown was the best way to contain the virus. The government introduced a dusk-to-dawn curfew on March 27, but not the more strict lockdown measures that South Africa has introduced. For example, some 831 people from 24 out of 47 counties in Kenya were polled between March 30 and April 2 by market research company InfoTrack. Most of those who supported a total lockdown were from rural Kenya, with retired people and those in formal employment leading the pack. Meanwhile, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, has announced that all travel in and out of the capital, Nairobi, will be banned for the next three weeks as part of measures to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A ban on travel in and out of the coastal city of Mombasa and the nearby areas of Kilfi and Kwale will come into force on Wednesday. Now, a magistrate court sitting in Ogwa, Lagos State here in Nigeria has sentenced Nollywood actress Funke Akindele and her husband, Rashid Bello, to 14 days community service. They were they are also to pay a fine of 100,000 naira each and will be isolated for 14 days in a place to be determined by the Lagos State Ministry of Health. The court also ordered them to submit the names of all the persons who attended the party. The Attorney General of Lagos State, Mr. 
Moyo Onibanjo, who briefed the media after the proceedings, also said plans are underway to apprehend and charge other persons who attended the party. As part of their sentence, the court also directed the celebrity couple to visit 10 important public places to create awareness, awareness about the pandemic. According to the Attorney General, Akindele Ambelo will first observe isolation before doing the community service. Married life got off to an unexpected start for a pair of newlyweds in South Africa when police showed up to the party. They had received a tip-off that the wedding in KwaZulu-Natal was happening on Sunday despite a nationwide ban on all public gatherings because of coronavirus. All 40 wedding guests, the pastor who conducted the ceremony, and the newlyweds themselves were promptly arrested and taken to a police station outside Richards Bay. The whole group is to be charged in court. Widely circulated videos show the moment the groom helps his wife into the back of a police van in her white wedding dress, complete with train and veil. South Africa, which has 1,655 confirmed cases of coronavirus, including 11 deaths, is now in the second week of one of the world's strictest lockdowns. It has seen more mobile testing units as, a, as well as drive-through testing centers being rolled out. Soon the country will be able to test 30,000 people every day. Now, for the first time in his career, Burkina Faso's revered storyteller goes live on Facebook, but not in an effort to propel the traditional art that is so prized in West Africa into the 21st century, but rather to help the people of Burkina Faso endure the coronavirus curfew. Let's take a look. <laughs> If you're locked down and looking for an escape, you could do worse than Burkina Bay Bard Kientega Pilienguinde Gerard, otherwise known as KPG. A household name in his home country, KPG has won numerous awards and attend festivals across the world. He's credited at home with reviving a waning tradition of storytelling for adults. Those under curfew in Burkina Faso and beyond can tune in via Facebook Live to hear KPG start his shows with his trademark. Zida, a student, is a fan. He says lockdown is hard for the Wagalese who are not used to staying at home. But at 7.30 p.m. on a Thursday, he says he gets his 10 to 15 minutes of joy. At 7.30, we can get 10 to 15 minutes of joy of uncontrollable laughter with the KPG show, and it helps to relax. KPG likes to leave the current crisis at the door, but he does wash his hands before the start of each show. Someone sent me a message. I didn't know him. He said that when his daughter saw that I was washing my hands, she said she too was going to go and wash her hands before listening to the story. That means there is an echo, an impact. That makes me happy. His storytelling also includes advice on staying safe, and is urging other artists to join him in spreading information, arguing they are more persuasive than politicians. It is not a tale. It is not a legend. It is not a myth. It is a reality. You have to respect the sanitary instructions of the Ministry of Health. Wash your hands regularly. Sneeze like this in your elbow. The modern-day bard has won awards in Lebanon, Denmark, Canada, Benin, and takes part in dozens of festivals worldwide every year. KPG is quintessentially Burkina Bay and adored by his home audience who say he has revived a waning tradition of storytelling for grown-ups. Bienvenue dans l'atelier de l'inamovible enclume. Bienvenue dans l'atelier où on entend le crépitement des feux du foyer. Kaito! Boom! Aha! Les anciens disent que on ne connaît l'importance des fesses que lorsqu'elles portent des fesses.
And that's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tenny Ola Shubo Ale. Bye for now.